Fewer than 600 astronauts have been to space during the 60 years since Yuri Gagarin made the first human venture into orbit. Today, at the European Astronaut Center in Cologne, we meet one of them, Luca Parmitano. You may have been keeping up with his space chronicles on Euronews, which he sent during his six months aboard the International Space Station. He explains to us why space exploration is important, what the main challenges are, and, above all, what lies ahead. Welcome back, Luca. Thanks. My pleasure. It's a pleasure to meet you on Earth after having watched your chronicles from space. What was the experience like for you? It was great sharing that experience, having the opportunity to speak to a large European audience in many languages. An opportunity not to be missed. I really like this exchange with the European audience. Let's go back to your return to Earth. I have the video here. I think a lot of people say wow about her as well. What sort of physical and mental sensations did you feel? First of all is the relief because everything went well. Then the happiness of being on Earth, the feeling of the sun on your face, the breeze, the smell, the wet earth. There was snow on the ground. All those smells have been kind of alien for 200 days. So it's a great joy mixed with a great tiredness because the gravitational effects especially in the first few days, are really strong. And what about the astronauts' program to get back into shape after returning from a space mission? On the one hand, there is a continuation of the physiological experiments that were conducted in orbit. Then there is a real rehabilitation, a part of physiotherapy which reminds us how to use muscles that are not active that much in microgravity conditions. Then there is physical activity, the lifting, running, swimming, cycling. During the 201 days of your mission, you posted a lot of photos and comments about Earth. What perception did you develop up there about the state of our planet? This year we have seen an unprecedented devastation in the Caribbean area, the Bahamas and Puerto Rico. We've also documented the fires in the Amazon rainforest in Africa and the bushfires in Australia, which I started photographing in September and continued until January and February. I invite you now to move to the Columbus module, the European laboratory, where we will speak in more detail of your scientific mission. OK, let's go. This must be like a little home for you now. Yes, welcome to Columbus. Even though this one is newer and far tidier than the real one. You've participated in about 50 European and about 200 international experiments. What kind of tests do you do in space and what consequences can they have on our life on Earth? The science that we carry out on board allows us to see how phenomena that are taken for granted on Earth, in a gravitational environment, are different when we bring them into orbit. It's an extremely controlled environment. In fact, we're able to control all the elements of that environment from the composition of the atmosphere, to temperatures, to gravitational effects. Because if we want, with the centrifuges, we can generate accelerations similar to those on Earth, on the Moon or Mars. You were the first Italian and third European commander of the ISS. What were the most significant moments of this experience? When you're the commander of the International Space Station, you're the leader of a very small community of highly trained and skilled people. You're not a babysitter and you don't want to give orders. But you step back and observe what's the best way to create an environment that allows everyone to work, communicate and operate in the best way. 
lavorare, comunicare e operare nel modo migliore possibile. How do you see the future of humans in space? What are the next stages of space exploration? We're currently on track to return to the moon, which will happen this decade. Then we should use the knowledge of human permanence in space developed on the International Space Station and what we will learn through traveling in deep space by coming back to the moon to go even further. I believe that Mars is a goal that still attracts us because it's the most similar planet to ours and the closest. If we want an interplanetary species, this must be one of our goals. And what about Luca Parmitano's future? Are you thinking about a lunar mission? Even more than a little thought, really. I'm still in the middle of my operational life and I have a good experience behind me with the International Space Station. If our future as an international community, as the European Space Agency, is to go to the moon, I really hope to be a good candidate for one of the future missions. What did you miss most when you were in space? The time spent with my daughters, the ones I love, with my friends, with my family, but in particular with my daughters. It's the human contacts that make us human beings. And man is a social being. The space chronicles you've been sending us from the ISS have been very popular, so we asked our viewers and followers to ask you some questions. Here are some of the ones we've selected. Mira wants to know, what do you feel when you look out one side of the ISS and see the Earth and deep space on the other? A mixture of emotions. Deep space is extremely beautiful as far as I'm concerned. It's the last one of the great mysteries to be discovered, the last horizon to reach for. You feel that especially during spacewalks, immersed in this darkness. On the other side, the Earth, our planet, our home, the cradle of life, the only planet we know that hosts life. Its beauty is unfortunately indescribable, or perhaps it's fortunate that we can't describe it. And let's close with Karina. How do you see daily life on Earth now after having spent more than six months in space? Extremely precious, extremely fragile, something to be preserved in all its forms. Luca, thanks for this little space walk with you and for opening new horizons for us. Thank you for your time and your questions.